by did you key and ate a fruit this week is infion lady ada what is this week's INPI? okay this week's INPI is from infinian which i don't know if we've covered them before it's this uh 14 pin soic chip i want to get the part number right it's the xdp2201 um it's a hybrid flyback controller um the particular uh slash new like the featured product on digikey.com slash new was about an eval board they have um for this chip which we'll talk about more in a bit um and this board takes ac power from the left and it converts it to a high current dc power on the right for charging batteries it's an evaluation board for uh large battery charging it also features the cool moss um MOSFETs with ultra low RDS on. It looks like they have a nice, yeah, cool MOS. They're so cool. Uh, they they are in this AC DC converter. Bam, <laughs> just like that. Uh, well, there's only two of them. There's five in, in this particular image. But um, yeah, it's an it's AC DC converter chip that is a hybrid flyback and uses also Infineon MOSFETs and also there's a valve board. So it's a three in one um, INPI. So, um, what this board, this eval board and this chip is part is part of is Infineon's um, full, uh, you know, from beginning to end documentation and support and product line for light vehicles, also known sometimes as like micro mobility or e-scooters, e-bikes, mono wheels, um, you know, balancing scooters and stuff. And if you're like us, you know, in New York City, you've probably seen a ton of these devices. E-bikes are really, really popular, um, especially over uh, COVID 2020. In mid 2020, they were uh, legalized. They were previously banned, but then they were uh, allowed because so many people were doing delivery. Uh, they weren't using cars. They weren't using public transport. They were using e-bikes and e-scooters and uh, skateboards and mono wheels. And so we see a lot of people with these battery powered um, micro mobility devices and they're great because, you know, they don't have gas and they don't need parking. You can you know, put them in your backyard or they can, you can bring them up to your apartment or, um, you know, leave them outside the house or whatever and lock them up. You don't need to park them. You can just go in the bike lane. Um, they don't go very fast, maybe 10, 15, 20 miles an hour. Uh, I just wear a helmet and you can you can zip around pretty quickly in the city. Um, so they're very handy, a nice intermediate where you don't want to own a car, you don't want to get into a taxi, um, but you also, it's a little bit too far to walk. Um, but in order for them to carry you and your groceries and the 75 pound bike itself, it can easily get to 200 pounds. And so these things have really, really big batteries. They have about 250 watt batteries, maybe even more, uh, 36 to 48 volt batteries. In comparison, this is a uh, 10 amp hour, a you know, basically 10, um, 10 amp hour times 3.7 volts. So this is, you know, maybe a, uh, 35 watt um our battery and the ones we're talking about here are you know 10 15 times larger and they tend to have you know they can have like 15 to 25 to 30 of these standard 18 650 batteries and um you have to charge them very fast and they have to discharge very fast because especially as you're you throttle up and you want to kind of go up a hill carrying you and your bike and all your stuff they're gonna have to discharge a lot of current and then of course to discharge a lot of current they have to be very big which means when you charge them you have to have a big charger and that makes them kind of dangerous um they are you know very big highly dense energy sources and um in new york city especially we've had a couple of fires from people not charging their batteries safely so it's really really important to pick and design a really good charger. If you're in a company and you are the electrical engineer, you're working on designing um, a product that uses these high density batteries, you wanna make sure that you are getting um, your uh, design certified. It's low, um, low heat, so it doesn't overheat. It's uh, high efficiency, so again, less dissipation. Um, it's UL certified, it's um, well heat synced. Um, it does a good job and, um, you know, it plugs only one way into the battery and it doesn't electrocute people. So there's all these things about batteries, but also the charger has to be well designed. And that's what, uh, that's what, um, this 
converter from Infineon is, and the eval board is all about, is how to charge these batteries. So, you know, these batteries, you need to, again, they're, they're 100, 250 watts and they're 48 volts. So you need to basically have something that gives you mains power, AC, direct to DC. You're not going to be able to do a DC, AC and DC conversion and then boost up to get that wattage. You basically have to go straight to the wall. And because of that, you're dealing with mains power. So you want to be safe. You want to use something like a flyback converter that has isolated output. See that uh, transformer in there gives you isolation. So there's no risk of the hot or the neutral um, accidentally touching the metal case of battery or the metal case of the bicycle, which could be very bad. Um, also, of course, uh, you know, sparks could uh, cause fires. So having current limiting and isolation is important. Um, but there's some trade-offs with flyback converters, which is that uh, they tend to be really big and they're not good at lower voltages. They're good at like high voltages, especially if you want to boost up voltages. Here, we're kind of bucking down. We're going from like 100 to 48 or 32 or maybe 220 to 48, 32. And so that's where um, we've got this design for a hybrid flyback controller. So this hybrid controller, uh, what's neat about it is it's very small, it's inexpensive, and it's very, very high efficiency, 95%. So you get the efficiency that you would expect from you know, your kind of standard DC-DC buck converter operating at its you know best input-output optimized uh, configuration. But um, this design is flexible about the input. You can drive it from 110 or 220, depending on whether you're in Europe or in uh, North America. Um, and it can handle different output voltages as well, which could be handy as you're charging this battery, the battery starts lower, it gets a little bit higher, or maybe you want to support different size battery packs with one PCB design that you just tweak the configuration. Um, so it's a little bit more complicated than just a flyback, but what's really nice is that the chip, the uh, X... XDPDS2201 has a lot of stuff built into it. Um, one thing, for example, it has the MOSFET drivers built in. It has a little uh, mini booster inside that helps you uh, drive both the high side and the low uh, side MOSFETs. You don't need a separate driver chip for those really, really big MOSFETs. Um, it does stuff like keep track of your zero voltage and zero current switching. You don't want to uh, switch the... Um, AC on and off in the middle of a cycle. You want to do it when it does the zero crossing. And so this chip kind of does all that for you. So it's kind of got the simplicity of your, you know, standard um, analog flyback or DC, you know, buck converter, AC, DC converter, but it's also got um, this enough smarts inside that it can give you stuff like failure codes out of a UART pin. It can also give you, uh, you can program the configuration uh, via this pin um, into a one-time programmable EEPROM for um, setting and fixing design. And it's been used in um, uh, eval boards that they've created. They have a eval board for USB PD that can give you as little as 5 volts out to 20 volts. And then, of course, this version, which gives you 32 to 48 volts. Um, I'll admit I'm not, you know, a big power uh, electronics designer. I didn't take that class in school, and I haven't done a lot of uh, high-voltage power design. But Infineon does have this really great... Um, webinar, like it's not a webinar, it's like a slideshow webinar, I guess. And uh, there's a person who speaks and there's a lot of slides and they actually kind of go through and explain um, what's the difference between the flyback, your classic DC-DC converter and this hybrid uh, feedback. Specifically, what it's really good for is it's more efficient because not only is current stored in the transformer like most flybacks or in the capacitor like most buck converters, but it switches between the two depending on whether you're uh, at a low input voltage or high input voltage. Um, and then the cool thing about this XDPS221 is that, of course, it can handle both. Oops. Oops. <laughs> um, this is the basic app note for the layout uh, of this chip. Uh, you'll notice that you do need, you know, transformers. You do need um, voltage into, you know, you have to power the chip. And so you'll see that uh, full wave rectifier, um, it's very low current um, power draw, uh, quiescence, like only like 25 or 50 milliamps, but you still need to have some DC voltage in. Um, but then the output from, uh, you know, the primary coils go in into the chip, which then controls these two FETs. 
There is uh, an opto-isolated feedback input so that the output voltage is controlled, which is good because if you're charging a battery, you want to get it you know, close to the open circuit voltage of the battery, maybe a little bit higher, and then the internal charging circuitry um, doesn't have to burn off all that extra excess voltage as heat. Um, and there's also these built-in parameters. So you can tweak the settings. Um, you know, the, the day sheet goes into all the settings of like your startup um, delay and like burst delays and you know what inductor size, and how much current and your voltage output, all that stuff. You can configure it uh, with these parameters. There is a pin on there called the multifunction IO pin and it, I guess it's uh, asynchronous UART. They have a uh, programmer dongle you can use to read and write it. And what's really nice is it also outputs uh, failure codes, which is like kind of handy. This is a, a you know, non-trivial power supply. If you're designing something that you're going to have uh, people who are in a rush, they want to charge the battery and it's not working. Why isn't it working? Maybe because it's overheating or there's a timeout or a disconnection or you know something mechanically goes wrong. You could probably have on your little charger um, at least an error code that tells people, hey, look in the manual, look on the website to see what is wrong with your setup because these batteries and these chargers can be fairly expensive. Like I looked at prices of e-bikes and they're, you know, they're a thousand to three thousand dollars. They're not, they're not cheap. So the more you information you give people, you don't want them to throw out the batteries um, or charge them unsafely if it's not a good time to charge them, if it's too hot or too humid out or too cold. Um, or if uh, the voltage is too low or you're getting an over voltage or over temperature. Um, so all those outputs come on the uh, UART mode and then you would read them from a microcontroller and display them on uh, an LCD or LED. Um, and this is part of a big family of products. So Infineon does a lot of stuff for micro mobility. They do the microcontrollers, of course, these FETs, the charge controllers, but they'll also probably do your motor drivers and such as well. So uh, check out, they have like a, like a gigantic section of their site where you can like go to each part of an e-bike or e-scooter you want to design this sort of stuff they'll hook you up so you can do it safely in stock that's right these chips are in stock uh they also have the eval boards in stock but this chip in particular the x dps 2201 um you want to do something flyback style high voltage ac to dc this chip will probably do it for you okay i'm gonna have a video we're gonna play it and then we'll see you on the other side for some new products Introducing industry-first application-specific standard product based on asymmetric half-bridge flyback topology with Infineon's latest hybrid flyback controller, XDPS2201, to enable ultra-high-density charger design. It consists of a few major building blocks. A main stage and a PWM controller on the primary side, a rectification and communication protocol on the secondary side. XDPS2201 converts and delivers power over an isolated barrier in an efficient and safe manner. Targeted application includes smartphone charger, adapter, and USB PD charger. Bill of material savings and ease of design with an integrated high voltage startup cell and high side MOSFET gate driver to yield a potential saving of up to 20 external components. Multi-mode operation across varying load and line input conditions delivers high peak and average efficiency. Simplified and low-cost transformer design with a single auxiliary winding to support variable output voltage requirement. Infineon has developed a USB PD charger solution housed in an ultra-compact PCBA form factor. The solution supports a maximum output power of up to 65 watts, delivering a class-leading power density of 31 watts per cubic inch. As a leader in power semiconductor, the 65 watt solution incorporates CoolMOS, OptiMOS PD, communication protocol controller, and hybrid flyback controller XDPS2201 to deliver a high efficiency of up to 93.8% to miniaturize your next charger design. For more information, please visit our website www.infinia.com/xdps2201.